Good morning, guys. Happy Tuesday. Um, got a couple things to show you. Um, one of the things is I am going to be releasing a new version of the installer today, so I just wanted to walk people through what's different and also show those interested in doing translations how they would go about that. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and launch the installer as I normally would here. And for those of you interested in doing uh, translations for me, you want to select this option. Um, those of you that just want multilingual support of the program, you don't need this. This is just for people that want to contribute to the translations. So you go ahead and select this, hit next, install as normal. Once that's done, you have Input Mapper installed, um, but you need to go online and grad go over to this website here. It's unclassified.software forward slash en forward slash source forward slash tx translation. And I'll go ahead and put that link down in the description here. Um, but you want to head to this page here and you want to go download and that's going to download the actual utility the, that allows you to edit the, uh, can, the language files and it'll look like this here. Um, so I already have it installed so I'm going to close out of this and bring it up. It's called TX Editor. Alright. So once we have this, uh, we're going to go into our installation folder input mapper and we're going to see a file here if we selected that option during installation to install a local language file we're going to see a file called localization um, that'll be a .tx extension I believe uh, so we're going to go ahead and open that guy up here and you can open it through here. I just like to drag and drop in. It's a little easier. And you're going to see uh, categories. Um, and these all obviously correspond to categories and text that's present within the actual program. And you'll see uh, I haven't finished a lot of them. But uh, if you click on any of these over here, these are your keys. You'll see uh, spots where you can add the translations in over here, and most of them, most if not all, will have an English one already because uh, without that they show up as just like variable names in the program, so they'll at least have English. Um, but then you can add in, you know, uh, Russian or Chinese, I already have added to the file, but there's no actual translations in there. Or you can go over here to New Culture, and you just select one from the list. Um, now, if you have a, uh, like a culture or something that varies by region, um, I would prefer to, for now, while we have a limited number of translations, to stick to like the, the root culture um, and not the region specific. Uh, for example, I'll, sh I'll pull up English. Uh, and you'll see that there are, you know, region specific Englishes. Um, so even though, you know, I'm EN uh, US I believe is an option here yeah English United States even though technically that's me um, I did my translations for the root culture just EN and that helps uh, the program fall back to this one um, for all of these so uh, if your culture has a root culture that you can use I would suggest doing your translations with that um, it just makes it easier alright so uh, it's pretty basic. You just go in here, you add the text, and that's it. It'll work in the program immediately because it'll see that there's an external localization file, and it'll use that instead of the built-in one. Um, so, 
Uh, at that point, all you got to do is either put this on the website or zip it up and email it to me, something like that, and I'll merge it with the actual one that I'm using. Um, that way I can distribute your translations as well. So, uh, pretty basic. That's how you go about the translations. A um, couple other things that I am working on. I'll fire up the new version here. There were quite a few bugs. Um, actually, some people might not have even noticed them because they were uh, pretty conditional, uh, depending on like what controllers are plugged in and what time you plug them in and all that. But there were some bugs with how the controllers were reporting an input mapper, and even one that was making the uh, the Sony dongle controller um, continuously re-report, re so it, it would show multiple controllers, even though there's only one. Um, but anyways, I got that taken care of. Um, let's see, uh, something I'm working on is um, ah, bringing logging. Um, there is now logging part of this application, but it's not part of the UI. Um, unless there's like a critical message or something like that, I didn't see the reason to clog up UI space with a, a log tab. So um, instead that's just logging to a file and that is in the app data folder. And we'll go into input mapper and we'll see a new folder here called logs. Uh, we have two of them. One of them is error. Uh, one of them is session. The session specific log here uh, will show all the information uh, regarding the last run instance and uh, including debug messages. Um, the error log will show just relevant error information and that will accumulate over multiple run sessions so uh, you can reach back and see old errors if you need to. Um, so that's just something I needed to include in that was missing in a couple versions. Um, I'm also working on a way to easily uh, capture that information for reporting purposes. Uh, this isn't anywhere near done yet though, but um, it'll allow me to aggregate some information together into kind of a uh, like a memory dump or a bug a bug log that will allow me to more easily track down bugs in the software. Uh, we got the application log, which is the same as what I just showed you, but this is just formatted for web use, uh, so it's a little bit easier for me to navigate through using another piece of software. Um, installed applications, which is important because there are uh, con conflicting applications that um, IAM doesn't like to work with. Uh, so this helps me make sure that you know none of those are present. Um, and then there'll be uh, a couple other tabs. One of them's like uh, running um, running processes to make sure nothing is actually running that's conflicting, um, an error log, uh, probably system specs, stuff like that. So uh, it's this is still pretty early here though. All right, well, that'll do it for this one. See ya.